Hello, in this video we will see how exactly internet works. Let's understand how internet works by taking this very simple example. There is this person who is sitting in US who is using his laptop and he is texting his friend who is sitting in India. He might be using WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger or any other texting app. So using this example, we'll see how they both are connected via internet. So if you look at it, it's a laptop which is connected to a mobile phone. So the person using laptop is messaging the person who is using mobile phone. Since the distance is very far, I'm sure most of you looking at this video would be thinking the only way of communication is via satellite. Unfortunately, you're wrong. Only 1% of the internet uses satellite. Any reason why? Let's go back to our example. Now, if you look at these two points, the distance between these two points is 13,500 kilometers or 8,400 miles on land. Now, if you want the same communication to happen via satellite, the satellite on average is placed around 35,000 kilometers or 22,000 miles above. Now, for a signal to reach from America to India, it has to travel all the way 22,000 miles upward and 22,000 miles down. So if you add these two, it will come to around 71,000 kilometers or 44,000 miles, which is way, way, way greater than the distance between these two points on land. Because the distance is almost four times more via satellite, there would be a slight delay in the signal reaching from point A to point B if it's via satellite than via land. Second aspect is low bandwidth. Bandwidth is amount of information you can send at a time in a second. If the bandwidth is very high, the signal cannot travel long. Third important aspect is satellite communication will be affected by extreme weather condition. Whenever there's, uh, there's a cyclone or ex there's extreme weather condition, I'm sure your internet will get affected. It is not very stable. So these are the reasons why satellite is not preferred. So 99% of the internet is not via satellite. Then how? All the communication happens on land via cables. So if you look at this, there's a cable connected all the way from India to US. Cables are laid under sea. There are a lot of cables which are laid under sea and they are connecting whole world. So this is an example of a cable laid on the ocean floor. There are many cables laid all around the world. And in fact, if you look at this, this is a map showing all the cable connections around the world. So if you can see like there are many, many cables laid connecting different continents. In fact, there are 420 plus cables currently as of today. And the longest cable is 39,000 kilometers or 24,000 miles. This is also called as internet backbone because internet will not work without these cable connections. So they also call this as internet backbone. And there are companies which are also called tier one internet service providers. These companies are responsible for managing these cables. So there are multiple companies, multiple internet service providers. In fact, some huge ones, they actually lay these underwater cables, they manage them. Now that we know, different continents and countries are connected via underwater cables. The question arises, how is this laptop connected to this underwater cable? Likewise, how is this particular mobile connected to this underwater cable? So basically how you and me who are using internet are connected to this underwater cable network. To understand this, let's go to place where we connect a laptop. Now let's say you have your modem at your home and you're using laptop and you're connected to your modem using Wi-Fi. We'll see how this modem is connected to deep sea cable. So every region has its own local internet service providers. So any internet connection you have at your home, you will have to get it from one of the internet service providers. For example, if you are in US, you'll probably get it from AT&T, Spectrum. There will, there will be different internet service providers. So you will get it from one of them. So that is your local internet service provider. So your modem is connected to your local internet service provider and your internet service provider is connected to the deep sea cable. Now let's look at an example of a person using mobile phone. How is he connected to the deep sea cable? If you see, if you're using mobile phone, that means you're using internet on mobile via 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, etc. So your internet on your mobile phone is provided by your mobile network provider. So here your mobile network provider, who are is giving you a mobile network from whom you purchase your SIM, they are your internet service provider. They are your local internet service provider. So your mobile is connected to a mobile tower. Mobile tower is connected to the internet service provider or the mobile network provider, which is Geo, Airtel, etc. And these people are connected to deep sea cable. Now that we know how you and me are connected to the deep sea cable, now like you using your laptop and me using my mobile phone, 
there could be millions of or billions of devices in the world. How does a particular device know how to connect to another device? This is where IP address comes into picture. To understand this better, let's take an example. The moment you are connected to the internet, your device will get an IP. And this IP is unique. No other device can have the same IP. This way, the devices will be able to find each other in the internet. Now let's say from your laptop, you want to connect to a camera which is located very far away. You can use the camera IP to connect to it. So using IPs, devices will be able to find each other in the internet. Now that your laptop and your mobile phone has IP, your laptop will be able to connect to your mobile phone because each of them have an IP and they'll be able to connect to each other. So the moment you're connected to the internet, you'll get an IP address. But how does your device get an IP address or who in the internet will give you IP address? That's where this organization comes in. It's called ICANN, Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. Basically, this organization is responsible for assigning IP addresses and also managing domain name coordination. This organization is responsible for IP address allocation. The moment you are connected to internet, you get an IP which is assigned by this particular organization. So how are you getting this IP from this organization? This organization doesn't directly give you IPs. This organization has delegated the IP generation to five regional internet registries. Depending upon which region you are in, you will get your IP from one of the regional internet registries. Let's say I'm in India and I am connected to an internet service provider in India. Now, any IP you get has to come from your internet service provider. This internet service provider will get the IPs from your regional internet register. Depending upon which location you are, you will get your IP from one of these regional internet registries. If you have a broadband, your broadband provider, let's say you are in America. Now, no matter which broadband you use, all the broadbands will get their IPs from ARN. If you are in Asia or Australia, no matter which broadband or mobile network you use, they all get their IPs from APNIC. So depending upon which location you are, your internet service provider will get the IPs from one of these regional internet registries and you will get your IP from that list. So the moment you are connected to the internet service provider, from the list of IPs it got from the registry, it will provide one for you. Now that we know how IPs are generated. So IPs are generated by these five organizations and a parent organization is ICANN. We'll see how ICANN also helps in domain name coordination. To understand domain name, let's take an example. You know, as we already understood that device can only talk to each other or they can find each other, discover each other only by IPs. No other means. But IPs are difficult to memorize. Humans can't memorize IP. Domain names on the other hand are easy to remember. For example, if you look at this, this is a Facebook IP. You can't remember this IP and this IP is also tend to change. But this domain name will not change and it's easy to remember. You can always remember facebook.com. Then remembering 157, 240, 192, 34, 35. But the devices can only communicate using IPs. They cannot communicate with facebook.com. So in this example, if you replace mobile with Facebook server here, which means you have to connect to this particular server on this particular IP to get Facebook. But you are only going to give Facebook.com. But how does Facebook.com will map to this particular IP? So how does it get resolved to this particular IP? We look at this example. This is where ICANN comes into help. So ICANN helps in coordinating and also helps in resolving domain names. ICANN has a list of root servers operated by different operators and each of these root servers will help in resolving your IP address for a particular domain. In fact, there are 13 root servers. And if you look at this, facebook.com is a domain and .com is a top level domain name. So each of these root servers maintain the top level domain name. So sample.co.in is a domain and .in is a top level domain name. If you are using laptop and if you are typing facebook.com from your browser, the request will go to the DNS root server, which is one of those root servers and it look for the top level domain. So here the top level domain is .com. So the request will be routed to .com name server. So this is a server which will know all the .com domain names or where to find the IPs for .com domain names. Once the request has come to .com domain name, it will send the request to the name server which tells you what is the IP for Facebook.com. So it will go to the Facebook name server and the Facebook name server will tell you this is the IP for Facebook. So your browser will get the IP now. Now using this IP, the browser will make a request to Facebook server and it will load the page. 
So as you can un understand now, how Facebook is resolved to 152, 240, 192, 35, so that your laptop knows it has to make a request to this particular IP to get Facebook. So we are all connected by cables and devices will be able to find each other using IP address. And if you want to access a website like Facebook, Netflix, etc., you should know the IP address, but you cannot remember the IP address, that's why we use the domain names. This is how internet works. Until we see next time, thank you.